Creating a display, you need to look at all of this and do some experimenting. Today I'm here with Dr. Tom Elias, uh, and you were the former director of the National Arboretum? Yes. How many years were you? Oh, I was there for 16 years. 16 years? From, do you know what, like, what, what years it was? Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> that was 13 years ago. So, uh, 2011, 2010. You were overseeing parts of the, the Arboretum well, were... The National Arboretum, we, part of that is the National Bonsai and Punjing Museum. Okay. But we also did uh, research on developing new ornamental plants, oh. uh, flower, floral plants and woody plants for the nurse, American nursery industry. Oh, okay. okay. And uh, during that time, I studied the uh, bonsai industry in North America. Okay. As a, as a specialized part of the nursery. And I know that you've traveled the world as well and gone to many countries to see other exhibits. Where, where are some, some famous kind of exhibitions that you've been to? Yeah, I've got quite keenly interested in uh, bonsai uh, gee, almost 30 years ago. Hmm and had a, a few of my own bonsai, but I did travel throughout the United States, Asia, and extensively in Japan and China, but also Vietnam and the Philippines, and Australia, many, many countries, Europe, uh, Italy, France, Germany. Mm, okay, so you were bonsai exhibitions. Mm, okay, large exhibitions. Uh, yeah, major, major bonsai uh, conventions and I was a consultant for the World Bonsai Friendship Federation mm. and served on the board of Bonsai Club International for five years, okay. three years as president. Okay. So you gave me a great exposure to bonsai around the world. You know, you've seen these huge exhibitions, but say for people at home and maybe smaller organizations that are interested in doing displays on their own, um, are you familiar with some of some of the elements that maybe could contribute to that? For people yeah, I, I think we can uh, provide some basic design elements for people. Okay. Because if you're like the typical bonsai collector or grower, you have a collection of maybe 10 or 20 or 50 trees that you've been working on for years. So how can you appreciate the, the trees in your home or in local local shows, and that's I think what we should talk about uh, today. What are things that we should consider when it comes to, you know, display at home or on a simple tabletop? Such as well, this? I think you need to treat your bonsai or stones as a work of art. And you find a space in your home, you may have a space where you show art, or if you don't, it's best to have a clear art background, backdrop, Okay. not have flowery wallpaper. Displaying your bonsai like this, you want people to focus on that. Okay. And you don't want anything to distract from it. Or a neutral color okay. is best. Okay. Uh, rather than a bright red or blue or green. Oh, okay. So something like that. That will compete with the object that you want people to look at. And same with, you can put up a temporary table. Mm. You, uh, you can use a folding table or in some cases you have narrow tables that you can display art on because the idea is you want people to focus on the on the specific thing like this. So say we have a display table, let's just say this is an example. Where would you kind of start with this, Tom? Well, you decide what type of display you want. And if you're just displaying a magnificent bonsai or tree by itself, that's fine. Or you can display a stone by itself. But if you're going to have a, other objects on display with it, there's some, a few basic things you need to remember. What is the principal object in the display? In this case, it would be the bonsai. And if you want to have uh, accessory items with it, such as this stone, the hut stone, okay. uh, you have to be concerned about the scale and the appropriateness. The stone must relate somehow to the tree. You can easily see that you have the house and a large tree growing next to it. This is would not make a good display. Mm, okay. You mean the two, you got two trees, trees ah. competing with each other. Okay, I see. The accessory item should complement the mm. primary object always. Okay. okay. And so if we got rid of this and have the stone, 
you have uh, having a, a large tree next to a stone does make sense. Mm -hmm. And so the stone here is complementing this tree. If you wanted to have a picture or scroll in the background, a painting, you want you could have uh, a one of a few clouds drifting by mm. or a couple birds flying. So when we're thinking about display, are we always thinking about a, a story as well? Is yes, it yeah, it's yeah. what message you want to convey. Because you, you think out what you what you message you want to convey to the viewer. Okay. And you're creating an, something with beauty and aesthetic qualities. And so they all have to make sense. You would not have, for, for example, a scroll or a painting of a tree because this is already a tree. You want something that complements it. It needs to be subtle, not brightly colored or dominant because then your person's eye would be go to the scroll and the same way with the other accessory item. Okay. The accessory items always complement the primary one. The other item is scale. When you have a primary object and you use an accessory item, the accessory item should be in the proper scale. Mm, okay. And in this case, this is stone is maybe a little big for this tree. Mm -hmm. uh, and you could use a larger size tree with this, but let's, for example, change trees. Let's put this one. You need a object that's tiny, really small. In, when you look at the tree, it gives a tree an impression, viewers impression of a much larger object. If this is the primary, then I would use a, a just a small uh, pot with okay. a, uh, some, maybe some grass or some tiny plant. Oh, I see. Like a kusimono, it. like a small yes. kusimono. Oh, right. okay. This Sweet. is not appropriate for the scale, right? but also for another uh, reason. Mm. And that is bonsai have a direction or flow. Now, if we use... This, for example, okay. you wouldn't position the bonsai here because it's it's it, the flow is flow is this it, way to is. this way, and your the viewer's attention is going to be away from the center. Okay, where there's so nothing here. I see. This would be better displayed oh. like this. It's going towards the center. Here we have the, a display with the the olive tree. The flow is to the right towards the center of display and we're using the little bronze hut uh, to create scale. And so you're creating, evoking feelings in the viewer's mind. Since it's an olive tree, you wouldn't use, for example, a crab or okay. a turtle okay. because that associated with water. Mm, okay. And those would be used with, say, a, a stone that's holding water or stone from the beach. But the olive is associated with very dry climates, mm. Mediterranean climates. So you want to use something, an accessory item that's appropriate with that. Okay. Could you have a stone as well? Or would it have to be you a You could have a stone, stone there. You would need to have a fairly small stone. Okay. This stone might. And yeah. see, the stone, the flow of the stone is in this way. This would not be good. So in your display, you're always wanting to focus the attention right. inwards toward the and not away. So because this way, as you were saying, the line and yeah. the flow just continues out. So you can use something like uh, this, Jason. This is just a placemat. So just that we can see the difference actually between the two, just the stand and how it makes a dramatic change. And this adds a little more depth to it. Mm. It helps define the display space. You've got a, a clear, plain background. And so when someone's viewing this, they, they, their attention is not here, focused on this, not on other things behind it. If you had a small painting of some birds or clouds, very subtle, mm. you could put that in the center between the two. But you don't need it. Okay. You don't have to have a scroll. Okay. You don't need to spend hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars on antique scrolls or even uh, antique display stands. Yeah. You can get by with, like this, with an inexpensive wood placemat. This is a, a very nice uh, Japanese suiseki, and you can display this by itself without anything. Mm. Now, sometimes you, they will use a accessory item to make this look bigger or smaller. For example, if you put 
the bronze crab there, you have the idea that the stone is relatively small, but it doesn't give the impression that the, the stone is very big. Now, if you remove this and replace it oh. with a multi-story pagoda, suddenly this becomes a large plateau or maybe overlooking the ocean or something. It's very easy to make a stone look much larger in your mind than it actually is by the use of accessory items mm. such as this. One very important thing is if you're using accessory items, use as few as possible. One is one or two is better, like if you had two little birds. Okay. Don't put three or four or five things on here. It makes it cluttered and you lose the the purpose or focus of the of the display. Let's put a few on there. Okay. And just just uh, to see that effect. It just makes the, the display too cluttered. Mm, I see. And you're distracted by all the objects. Right. So this stand is an interesting one. Let's talk about the stand. This is a multi-level uh, stand for two or three or objects. You want your attention to focus towards the uh, primary object, which we, which would be the tree in this case. Mm. Now, when it's here, this is a good position, but I don't like this. Yeah, let's just adjust it. You could shorten it a little bit. See, that, that improves it because mm. it leaves some space there. Okay. And then you could have this stone here. You have the, you have the display framed. Mm. So this is like the picture frame. And then the primary object is here. The flow is towards the center. Mm. So this okay. is much better. So we've talked a lot about sort of tabletop displays at home and sort of uh, small displays for clubs. If we were to sum it up again, what are some of those elements? First thing is to have a space de clearly defined that will allow you to focus just on the object and have nothing competing with it. And if you use any accessory items, be very concerned about the scale and that any accessory items must complement the primary object. Be sure that you have the display is balanced and there's a clear hierarchy so that all the elements are directing your attention towards the primary object and keep it simple okay don't keep... clutter it up with lots of things all right great all right well thank you tom that was very informative you're welcome <laughs>